we're back. Now it's time to take a look at a few of the bears that we're thinking about putting in our bear park. Here we have a black bear. Isn't she a beaut? But remember, she can be a killer. Don't you worry though, at our bear park you'll be perfectly safe while getting a look at some of the most amazing bears in the world. This here is a polar bear with some of her cubs. Polar bears are the largest land carnivores in the world. We'll have a special habitat for her which mimics the conditions in the Arctic completely. You and I might feel a bit of a chill though. Next up is... Crikey, this must be a mistake. Let's skip to the next one, shall we? Okay, here we go. Wait, what's a John Dory? Seems like a few of me mates are having a go at me. I'm just gonna go straighten them out. Why don't you have a closer look at our bear park? In Baron Park from Mayfair Games, the players have been tasked with building a new bear park. The object of the game is to build the best bear park, and that's measured, of course, by victory points. To do this, each player is given their own blank park board. The boards have different symbols on them, and when you cover up any of these symbols with a tile, you get to draw a corresponding tile from the supply board. There's many different kinds of tiles included, like animal houses, enclosures, playgrounds, rivers, toilets, and these tiles all have different shapes. And you want to place these on your turn so that they fit together Tetra style on your board. You have to fill up all the spaces on your board except the pit in order to get a coveted bear statue. The bear statue in the pit completes that board for you. Each of the tiles has a victory point value listed on them, as do the bear statues. The bear statues will have a descending point values on them, so it's better to finish your boards as quickly as you can to get the higher value bear statues. Yes, I did say boards. You don't fill up uh, just a single board that you start with at the beginning of the game. The construction crew icon on your board allows you to select a new board right there to add more area to your park. And you can have a maximum of four boards in the game and you can place tiles that cross multiple boards, which that really helps in case you accidentally tile yourself into a corner. Each player begins with one of the starting boards and a single tile depending upon the number of players. The tiles are grouped into three types on the starting board. There's green areas, animal houses, and enclosures. You have to put all the tiles into the appropriate stack before the game, and the number of tiles in each stack varies with the number of players. And this by far takes the most time during setup, but it's not too bad if everybody's helping. On a player's turn, they place one tile onto their board. The first tile can be placed anywhere on their board, but you also want to cover up one or more of the icons on the board so that you get to draw additional tiles. You draw either one tile or a new board for each icon that you cover up. So if I placed it here, like so, you can see I'm covering up a wheelbarrow and a cement truck with that first tile. The green wheelbarrow allows you to draw a new green area tile. The white cement truck allows you to draw a new animal house tile. And the orange excavator, which you can see here, allows you to draw an enclosure tile. And the construction crew allows you to pick a new board. The boards are all different and you're allowed to pick one from the top of one of the two piles of boards. So your choice might actually make a difference. After you place a tile, you draw the new tiles that you're entitled to based on the icons that you covered up. If you happen to fill out the board completely except for the pit, then you get to draw a bear statue and place it over your pit like so. And then play passes to the next player. If for some reason you have no tile to place, you can pass and draw a free green area tile, which you can place on your next turn. Play continues this way until one player fills up all four boards, and then the other players get one final turn, and the game's over. Everybody adds up all their points on the boards, and the player with the most points wins. And that's how you play Baron Park. What I like about Baron Park from Mayfair Games is the puzzle aspect of the game. Like many of those app games people love to play on their phones, you're working towards completely filling in an area in order to end the game. However, it doesn't mean that the player who ended the game will always win, as the points are what determine the winner. 
This game is for two to four players ages eight and up. Kids will, kids will find this more challenging, of course, as they're more likely to put themselves in a situation where there's no way they can finish all of their boards. The supplies are limited, and if they run out, well, then they run out. In your first few games, you might find players competing to get the one-by-one -one toilet tiles to fill up the random spaces on their boards, but once everyone has a little experience playing, you'll run into this less and less. If a player can't make any legal moves because of a lack of tiles, then they're forced to pass until someone else finishes the game. If by chance none of the players can make a legal move, then you just end up end the game and add up the points to determine the winner. Now this isn't spelled out in the rules, but it's the official ruling from the publisher. This game is really easy to learn, and it only takes like 30 to 45 minutes to play. It's a fun family game, and everyone who played it had a good time. My 10-year-old had no trouble picking up how to play, and started being a little more strategic after a few plays. I don't see kids having a decent chance to win, however, as most adults have better spatial planning skills than kids do. She still loved the game and really concentrated more on making a nice park than worrying about winning, but of course everybody's kids are different. The game also has an expert variant that includes achievement tiles that also come with the game. There's ten different types, and you would choose three of them to include with the particular game you're going to play. A fourth step is added to each player's turn in which they can claim one of these achievement tiles if they met the requirements for one of them during their turn. Examples include having three polar bears in your park, or a cluster of six green areas, or three food streets in a row, and so on. And achievements give you extra points that are also listed on the tile. The negatives in the game include the time it takes to set it up, as you have to separate all the tiles into different stacks. The box comes with this insert that splits it into four sections. Uh, it took me forever to figure out how to put the insert together to fit it into the box. And there's way more than four different types of tiles, so it really isn't a big help. But that's about it for negatives. It's got a nice theme, it's fun for the whole family, it's easy to learn, and it plays quickly. If your family appreciates a fun puzzle-type game, then they should love Baron Park. Gamers should love it too, as it does have a competitive aspect to it with these limited amounts of each tile. You need to plan ahead if you want to win. Thank you for joining me in this review of Baron Park from Mayfair and Lookout Games. Let me know if you found this review helpful by leaving a comment or sending me an email at elliot underscore miller at voiceofe.com. Make sure you subscribe to the Voice of E channel on YouTube, as I'll have a lot more thematic game reviews, and you won't want to miss any of them. Really, would you? No. Please tell your friends to check out the Voice of E, and hopefully they'll subscribe too. And so on, and so on, and so on. And one final note. I did this review as Steve Irwin because I truly respect the man and everything he meant to conservation and protecting wildlife and educating people. He was truly amazing, and he is still sorely missed by me and my entire family. Uh, we loved watching The Crocodile Hunter, and we'll still sometimes go back and see old episodes on Animal Planet. Of course, the Irwin family is still very active in the field, and they own and operate the Australia Zoo. You can find out more about the Australia Zoo at www.australiazoo.com.au. Thanks again, and until next time, keep your mind free. Now let's go get some of them bears.